from the Ice House in Pasadena, California, the comedy of Frank Welker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I, I'd like to start out by asking you a question. Uh, I'm kind of fascinated with voices. I love voices. And uh, I've noticed that in all the airports in America, there's one guy who does those announcements. And I'm always curious, why does he talk this way? Please hold handrail and stand to the right. If you wish to pass, do so on the left. Does he talk this way at home? Please pass the mashed potatoes. Sour cream on the right. Las Vegas is great though. That's the one place that's a little bit different. Oh, you from Las Vegas? All right. You gamble a little bit? Did you drive here? Your car is gone. But Las Vegas, you know what it's like there when you come into the airport, I love it because they have the celebrities over the speakers to talk to you. It's great, it's much more creative. It's... Hello, this is Bill Cosby. Welcome to McCarran Field. Okay, see now this is great, man. Now you come, you come to Las Vegas to get some dough. <laughs> now you got to get from the plane down to your luggage, but you got to be cool. Say, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Now, the problem starts, see, the problem begins when you come up to the movable walkway. Okay, the things the move the ribbits are gonna roll us up and say you got to stand to the right. So you stand to the right, cause you move on the rubber say but don't want other people he going to the left, they come out and beat your kids and stuff. Say I have no idea what he's talking about. There's no such thing. Oh, this is William F. Buckley. Oh. Always nice to have somebody from the left here in the audience. Uh, <clears throat> despite, uh, despite the rather fallacious disputations are uh, to the contrary. <clears throat> now, when you come to the uh, movable walkway, <laughs> please hold handrail and stand to the right. Uh, if you should find yourself being compelled or to linger to the left, be prepared for an increase in the rate of inflation, <laughs> welfare spending, and the national debt. <clears throat> Therefore, please grab a handrail and stand to the extreme right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> hey, oh, more impressions for you. This is one of my favorite television couples. Hey, it's yours. Hey, it's yours. Jeez, you come on from work. There ain't no food on the tables here. Who oh, wants you? I'm so glad you're home. Oh, she's a swally. You think you sound like Glenn Campbell with a hernia there? Hey, the jeez, how about some food on the table? Now my stomach's reactivating on me here. Now, check, 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 check. Oh, but Archie. <laughs> Last night I dreamed I was in the Miss America contest. <laughs> That's swell, Aiden. Who was you? Boink Parks? <laughs> Get over here, let's sing the song now. Boy, don't why Glenn Miller play. Songs that make the Guys like us, we had it made. Those were the days! You did The plane! The plane! The plane! Not the two. <laughs> That is not the plan. But boss, 
Let's say no very simply. Because I got up this morning and I put on my little tiny shoes and I ran up the stairs and I <laughs> My little heart was going <laughs> I looked out there, I could see that is the plane! The plane! The Tattoo, you're yelling in my knee. <laughs> Tattoo, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes the things that we think we see are merely representations <laughs> of the things that we think we see, even though we don't know what our hearts are telling us at the very essence of life, of timing, the very blood of seeing and feeling and timing, Corinthian leather, the very feeling of the nose of the <laughs> Are you stone, boss? <laughs> well, that island stuff, you know. So. Anybody have any uh, impressions you'd like me to try or uh, questions? Yes. Gomer Pyle. Gomer Pyle. Shazam! <laughs> uh, let's see. WC. WC. David Letterman. All right, I'd like to do for you David Letterman's teeth. <laughs> WC Fields, I yes, Gomer Pyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, uh, is Gomer back there somewhere? Yeah, well, let me go see if I can find him. Go upstairs. <laughs> Get out of here, kid. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. This is Dan Rather with the latest news. It all started with cigarettes, then saccharin, pesticide, preservatives, flame retardant chemicals found in babies' clothing. Now there's a new one to add to this growing and ominous list. Scientists in Canada confirm speculation today. Laboratory rats cause cancer. <laughs> Here's a weather report from Chernobyl. Partly cloudy and 2,000 degrees. <laughs> and now for some commentary, here is Andy Rooney. Hi, I'm Andy Rooney. You know what bothers me? Everything. Especially my eyebrows. Now, I like hair as much as the next guy, but I prefer it on top of my head, not in the center of my face. Any uh, Charles Perrault fans here? Here, what's that Sunday morning show? I love that Sunday morning show. It always like this. He has a little stool, things on it like this. Good morning. <laughs> this is Charles Kroll. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. A Sunday morning. Not unlike other Sunday mornings. A long string of Sunday mornings. We've edited the bad Sunday mornings. We just bring you the good ones. Let's take a close-up look now of some film in a little forgotten town, in a forgotten country, and part of the script that I forgot. As you can see, this is me walking down this rustic bucolic highway here in a little town in Indiana. There's nothing going on in this town anymore. Just the simple sounds of a simple town and a simpler time on Sunday morning. Uh... <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a simple little highway, me and the CBS crew standing in the middle of the... Uh... Uh... <laughs> well, I guess that's the final installment of the Charles Garrault on the Road series. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, any other uh, questions you can think of? Uh, impressions or sound effects? John Wayne. John Wayne. All right. Bo Winkle and John Wayne. And Rodney. All right. And Gandhi. <laughs> Well, well, what I would do for a pizza. Okay. <laughs> Stay right there and don't drink any more water. My name is Bullwinkle. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, I've done a lot of pictures in my time. Some of them were good and some weren't so good. I worked with that little guy called Stumpy. Stumpy? Yes, Duke. <laughs> Glad you called me out here. I was getting tired of waiting back here with Bullwinkle. <laughs> well, Stumpy, don't just stand there. Go get the moose. Yeah, all right, Duke. <laughs> yeah, Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good heaven. Baby John Wayne, let me put it through my hand into your head and pull out a toupee. Mm. Oh, gosh, that's corny, Bullwinkle. And now here's a feature you're sure to like. Debbie Dulles reporting for duty, sir. Uh, it's my friend Bill Scott. And Bullwinkle and Debbie Dulles, what's your mission? And now, speaking for McDonald's, Mr. John Hausman. Should buy a Big Mac? Should order several tons of fries? And have a large Coke? Several apple turnovers? You gain weight the old-fashioned way through calories. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. just say what a thrill it is to speak to all Americans and people from Pasadena. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here this evening in this town hall meeting, so if you have any questions, why, yell them out or whatever. A hundred million dollars in Nicaragua? Now, Tip, I told you never to use the F word. <laughs> yes, yeah, something else. What about the situation in Africa? Well, I thought Robert Redford was not cast properly. <laughs> I must say, to this day, I have no idea where Meryl Streep is from. She's so marvelous. <laughs> Just... When am I going to take a firm stand against a party in South Africa? <laughs> well...
with people like me and Secretary Schultz and Mommy, we'd get down and party anywhere. <laughs> Well, it follows five, doesn't it? No. Why do you ask? But, uh, Libya, well, I think you better ask your girlfriend about that. I think that our teenagers should be using them. I know mommy and me wished we would have used them more often. Right? Beg your pardon? Well, You could use those. Get some of those French ones, I guess. I think we've found the level of the press conference now. I'm sorry, the girl from New York has a question. If I don't do it, she'll knife me. Yes, speak up makes all your decisions for you, is that true? Yes. <laughs> yes, something else. <laughs> you mentioned something about the budget, you mentioned something about the colon. Well, that's what caused the problem. <laughs> it's a little bit like the House of Representatives. Sometimes it can be a pain in the... But if you go along with it, every year you can remove some... The economy! The economy. Well, I don't have any problems. You know, there was some commentary that Mr. Stockman exposed, if you will. He said that I didn't know anything about economics. Well, this is not true. As a matter of fact, I suggested to him that we could reduce the poverty level in this country. For example, if you make $6,000 or less, you are on the poverty rolls. Well, why not drop it to 3,000? We could eliminate 50%. <laughs> Some months ago, I said that I would reduce the size of government. Well, I've kept that promise. I've taken out three letters. It's now government. Well, well, speaking of Star Wars, I have a little joke about Muammar Gaddafi. I'd like to lay this on you if the comedians... Oh, you're singing? I'm sorry. Drugs just kick in, kids? Let me ask you kids this, if I may. What does an Arab with a speech impediment say to Mrs. Olson when he doesn't want another cup? Oh. We've got time. <laughs> Momor Gaddafi. Thank you and good night. God bless you. The remarkable personal recorded messages of your favorite stars, celebrities, and politicians from all across the globe, from tiny villas in the south of France to sumptuous hilltop mansions overlooking verdant Beverly Hills, to spacious, incredibly overpriced condominiums on New York's Upper East Side. Let's listen now to messages by the rich and famous for the rich and famous, recorded on machines built in factories owned by the rich and famous. Hi, 
Hey, this is Bob. Call me if there's a war of hope. <laughs> no, hey, I'd settle for a conflict. No, but seriously, you got a family squabble? I can do 20 minutes. Hey, you've reached my answering machine. Yeah, in my car. How about that, huh? Hey, you know, I'm so rich, I'm the only person who can afford to live next door to me. <laughs> no, but seriously. Hey, I want to tell you, Dolores and I would love to come to the phone, but we're taking a jacuzzi in the trunk. <laughs> no, but seriously, I want you to leave your name and number or any kind of message when you hear this. Hit it, Les. Thanks for the millions. I've made a lot of dough from pushing Texaco. Now you might think it's crass, but I just love their gas. So thank you so much. Hey, that was marvelous, Les. Gene, you got the whole band in the back seat. the sound of the beep, and I'll call you black. Hello. This is Glenn Eastwood. I want to do a scene from my new picture, The Male Chauvinist Pig. Go ahead. Make my breakfast. Hiya, this is Kermit the Frog here, and uh, you've reached my answering machine here in the middle of my pond. Wow, listen to those sound effects. What a budget. Oh, uh, by the way, you fellows will take a personal check, won't you? Sheesh. My fellow Americans, this is Gerald R. Ford, former president of the United States. I would simply like to... <coughs> Pardon me. You've reached our answering machine in Vail, Colorado, and we're out skiing right now, so leave your name and number at the sound of me leaving the condo. And uh, don't forget to put out the... <coughs> You've reached the residence of George C. Scott. That C is spelled with a C. All you have to do is listen for the beep and leave your name and number. Now, that's not too difficult, is it? Let's try it. Beep! Ha-ha! You didn't do it. Damn it! Now, listen to me. I want you to leave your name and your telephone number. If you want to reverse the order, that's fine. Leave your number and then your name. By God, just do it! You forgot again. Oh. All right, let me tell you a story. When I was in Saigon, which is spelled with a C, not an S like the State Department thinks it should be spelled, because a bunch of nimby pambies with tennis shoes and Kafkas, Kafkas, who's he, a writer? I don't give a damn. He left his name four weeks ago, and I didn't even have a machine. Now, I think you're beginning to get the picture. What you do is you call my number, which is seven, and leave your name and number on the machine. All right? Let's try it. Let me plug it in. <coughs> Jesus! <coughs> Never mind, I'll call you. Hello, this is Julia Child. I like to put just a little message on the machine. Now, if you want to, you can make a, a very petite message or a very uh, El Largo, which is a long cell. Uh, <laughs> 
give her a name and number at the sound of the... Uh, uh, hello, this is, uh, 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 this is Jimmy Stewart. Now, uh, let's see, the way this thing works now is that, well, you call me and this uh, machine, well, it's, it's a tape. This is a machine that answers uh, your, uh, what? Now, the only bad thing uh, about an answering machine is there's only a certain amount of tape, so you gotta make sure to Il va jamais l'air d'un des stupides grave garde pour rejoindre un bête d'or. Hi, this is Jacques Cousteau. We are about to embark on a great and perilous journey in search of the great white recorders players back us. Commonly known as the obnoxious California answering machine. One. Everything you hear was made possible by a very new, sophisticated Solomon. This is Gregory Peck. Well, I'm not here right now, so obviously you're going to have to make a decision. Are you going to hang up rudely? Or are you going to leave your name and number at the sound of the little... I guess you'd have to say it's a beep. Uh, I don't know what I'd do if it was me. I do want to read you this poem while you think of your number... Actually, it's Flemish. All right, listen to this. Honey, dirty pork of brune, there's a box tune. Honey for the hune, honey, honey, Now I want you to leave your name and number at the sound of my sibilant S. Friends, I want you all to say hello. Hello. Say hello, Billy. Hello. Bless you. You have reached my divinely inspired answering machine. You know, friends, if the Lord had had one of these machines, he might never have missed Peter's call because Peter had a beeper. Can you say Peter had a beeper? Peter had a beeper. These machines are super. Can you say super? Super. Can you say super duper? Super duper. Can you say super duper salad califra the let you guess behind it? P.U. Friends, remember the words of the apostle Cliff Robertson who once said, reach out and touch someone. <coughs> so leave your name and number at the sound of the babble. This is Richard Melhouse Nixon. Uh, let me make this perfectly clear. I want you to leave your name and number uh, at the sound of my cheeks. Hello, everyone. This is Walter Cronkite. You've reached the answering machine of the Cronkites. Well, leave your name and number at the sound of the beep and remember the words I told my wife uh, on our wedding night so many years ago. That's the way it is. Amazing. I'm irritated and I ain't even here. Well, 
you've reached the answering machine of Jack Nicholson. I ain't here. I'm at the Lakers game trying to have a good time in spite of the fact there's some little kid sticking gum on my chair and spilling coke all over my Reeboks. Anyhow, leave your name and number at the sound of the beep. Hi, this is Jimmy Carter, the former president of the United States. A lot of people have said that when I was president, I was wishy-washy on the issues. Well, maybe I was and maybe I wasn't. My wife, Rosalind, and I are out right now. But if you leave your name and address, we'll come over to your house and talk incessantly. Uh, you've reached the answering machine of the former senator of Tennessee, Howard Baker. I'm now the chief of staff for the president of the United States. And I'd simply like to take this opportunity to try and answer some of the questions that have been leveled at the president of the United States by the press corps. And I think rather unfairly. He is the president. Now let's just back off a little bit, and I'll try to answer the questions as to what the president knew, who he knew, why he knew it, how he knew, down to do na 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 I'm very sorry. Now, I think if you'll examine the record, if you'll take a look at what the president has said over and over again, you will come to the same conclusion that I have, that this person has absolutely no knowledge of anything. Hey, man, this is Sammy Davis, Jr., and I can't tell you, man, what a thrill it is to be here tonight on my answering machine. And I say that from the bottom of my heart, man, and I just can't tell you how much you mean and what a special human being you are. Whether you're a chick or a dude, I don't know, man, but you're beautiful, and I just want to say, hey, thank you for calling, like, my answering machine, man. All you have to do is leave your name and number at the sound of the price of gold dropping. This is Robin Leach, and that's it for answering machines of the rich and famous. And now back to the Ice House in Pasadena, California. Oh, I know, this is sort of an audience participation impression. If you will, assume the position of one of these fantastic, incredible Carson audiences. Here's Johnny! This is a good crowd, it's a good crowd. Last night we had, um, well, they were, I'd say, a little dumb. Crowd was a little slow, they were so dumb. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> they were so dumb, they thought Menachem Bagan was a new kind of breakfast meat. May the sewers of La Cunata back up on your Toyotas. <laughs> we, we, have a, we have a good show for tonight. Now, regardless of whatever uh, Carson says, of course, Ed McMahon goes in convulsions. What is this? Um, this is what? Uh, Friday. Came to me like that. This is um, Friday night, Ed. What are we... What are we uh, who's... Uh, what are we... Um, what are we doing? Who's there? <laughs> Friday night. What are we, uh, who's here? <laughs> oh, Johnny! <laughs> Good one, Johnny! <laughs> Well, I would like to do for you now uh, some sounds you hate to hear, and I think a good place to start would be the dentist's office. See if you recognize this little... I hit a nerve already? <laughs> See if you recognize this torture number. <laughs> no, 
Another sound I hate to hear comes from an instrument the dentists euphemistically call the mouth cleaner. It's actually the gum, tongue, and cheek torturer. <laughs> Tongue's on the way to West Covino. <laughs> Dental floss is kind of interesting. At home, you gingerly apply it between your teeth. At the dentist's office, they go for oil. <laughs> Open up. Any blood yet? No. <laughs> and once they have your mouth torn to shreds, you're bleeding profusely, they ask you to spit in a little white porcelain bowl 800 yards away in front of an attractive nurse. <laughs> It's all over your shoes, the little thing. Oh, I love the vest, too, that metal vest they put on you. Don't worry about a thing, just put this right on you there. We're gonna take a few pictures, it won't take a few minutes. There's nothing to worry about, we'll just put this on your little thing. Of course, I will be leaving the room to take a picture. <laughs> Makes you feel very secure, isn't it? Sound you hate to hear during surgery. <laughs> After surgery. Has anybody seen my glove? <laughs> Sound you hate to hear on a crowded elevator. Well, I think we really have come to the, uh, the more sophisticated portion of my show. I would like to do for you some bird calls, if I may. <clears throat> First, uh, bird calls. <laughs> when somebody with a very loud voice sit next to this man, I will tell you, then will you tell him, okay? <laughs> bird calls. Bird calls! I love a killer crowd, don't you? Yeah. It's great when the customers heckle the customers, you know? <laughs> hey, Sam Bird, man, what's the matter with your face? You want to play show what? Bird call. I love it. Okay. A North American goose. A South American goose. A Christmas goose. Into the world of psychology, a manic depressive duck. Choir of 15 ducks singing, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Now, the first duck, Mr. Quack, will do the solo. The following 14 ducks will join in on the chorus. Mr. Quack. This is the answering machine at the Western White House in Santa Barbara. Now, you may be wondering why we have an answering machine in California and not at the White House. Well, that's because in Washington they don't want me playing with anything that has buttons on it. 
Well, leave your name and number at the sound of the little tone. <laughs> 